So, Jeff, how's life in your COVID bunker? Oh, man, I am climbing the walls. I need to get out of here. Me too, man. We're vaxxed. We're masked. I'm itching to hit the road. Want to come along? Uh, yes. <laughs> I love it when we jump in a car and go on an adventure. But uh, where? Where are we going? Where will we stay? What will we do? Oh, hang in there, my friend. Let's not let the excitement of getting out of the house get the best of us. <laughs> um, sure. Okay, fine. Except uh, I'm freaking out. Like, there's so much to do. Planning these things is so discombobulated. Well, let's start by photocombobulating this mess then. Photography can be confusing. Camera gear, travel arrangements, safety, oh my. It can get pretty discombobulated. We're here to break things down and make them easier to handle. We're here to photocombobulate. I'm Jeff Carlson. And I'm Mason Mark. Here's the thing. Getting out is is wonderful, but there's there's all that lead up to getting out. I mean, yes, I can walk out my front door, find some flowers in the garden and take some pictures. And that's great. But, um, you know, once you start thinking a little bit beyond that, there are so many questions that come up, you know, and, and that can be for like a small, uh, you know, one day photo trip. Or maybe you're going away for a weekend. Maybe you're looking at, uh, you know, like a, a photo vacation or a regular vacation where you're going to bring your camera and you've got all the different logistics and travel arrangements. And what do I bring? Do I need to bring all the lenses that I own? Do I need to bring <laughs> all the tripods that I own? Because there's there, there's that inclination like, what? well, I, I don't know what I'm going to run into. So I need to bring everything. And then, of course... You know, there, there's something in there that you, you carry around. I, I know that there, there was some lens when I was in Hawaii that I carried everywhere and never used. And I got back and I was like, oh, right. I had this. And there's just so much to this that, that the, the photo combobulation needs to happen on this subject because it's such a big subject. It is. It's a very um, it's a very a complicated process of planning a photo trip. And the more planning, I, I firmly believe that the more planning you do, um, the more freedom you have when you get to where you're going. The problem with that is um, planning can oftentimes become sort of a framework that restricts you. And so I, <laughs> I do want people to feel um, comfortable when they go on their trips, that they've thought of things and brought the right things, um, yeah. but not trapped in their plans. And so <laughs> uh, let's start by talking about whether or not this is a photography trip or if it's a vacation, because I think that well, there's an important distinction there. Th that's a really good distinction because there have been many trips um, that I've been on with my family and I love going to places with my family, but do I want to wake everybody up at five o'clock in a hotel room when I, you know, go for a sunrise shoot? Well, quite honestly, most of the time I will not do that um, because there's that pressure or there's there's that sense of, um, you know, like I'm on vacation. So how much is photography for me going to be like work for this for this circumstance. And maybe that's just because of, of, you know, what I do, I write about photography and all of that. But, um, you don't want to get to that point where it's like, all right, everybody, it's two o'clock and it's going to take us, you know, 45 minutes to get to this location. And I know you're having a lot of fun looking through all these fun stores and things, but I've got a sunset to catch and we're going to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All your children's memories are of, them watching you rush to locations and take photos, <laughs> right? On all your family vacations. The, the, um, those, are the, those are the memories to build. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's not what we want, right? So, no. uh, yeah, I do, I do find that 
Um, family vacations aren't always the best places to bring cameras. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, especially if you're hoping to s- slow down and you know approach that flow state type of photography that we talked about in the last episode where you really have the time to get to know location, um, you know, wait for the great light and sort of get absorbed into the process of making that photograph. Vacations don't always give us that, but you can build a vacation to have those moments, but you really need to be deliberate and you need to be thoughtful about how you do that. So as we move ahead in this discussion, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a distinction between the family vacation where we're going to take a couple of photo opportunities and Mm -hmm. a photo specific trip, which we'll call a photo trip where the whole goal (laughs) is to make photographs. It's not, uh, you're not bringing the family. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe they're photographers and you can bring the family, but most of us, um, our loved ones tolerate our photography. Uh, they're not yeah. necessarily <laughs> bought into it like we are. So I, I think if I go on vacation, so for instance, early this summer, um, when school got out, we took a road trip around the West and we went out to Yellowstone and the Tetons and things. And I, I really wanted to make photos in a few locations and I could have, you know, tried to get out every day and make photos, but I knew that that wasn't going to, uh, be what my wife and kids wanted to do. So I, I built in some mornings and for me and my family's schedule, mornings are better, um, for me to, to, to escape, if you will, and make some photos than say evenings. Um, because my kids love to sleep in and my wife doesn't mind sleeping in on vacation. So, uh, I love to get up early. So I went out and got sunrise photos in a few locations and this was June. So sunrise was really super early. Mm-hmm. And so I got out to the, the famous Mormon barns in the Tetons, um, went out to a couple of different locations in the Tetons. Uh, one morning when we were in Yellowstone, I went out just outside the inn. We were staying at uh, the inn at Old, at Old Faithful, and I just went out and walked around there and made some amazing photos of some bison um, before the tourists got up and scared them all off. Right. And, you know, I just really enjoyed those times because they were about photography, but I had to block them out. Um, and so building that into my schedule was something that made me happy on the trip. And because I considered my wife and kids and what they wanted to do, um, it fit in with their sleeping in time. So it, neither of us felt slighted. Yeah. It worked out yeah. really well. But, well, so, yeah. so one of the things that I'm hearing also, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it also sounded like you were pretty deliberate about these shots or at least the these locations so it i mean here's the thing that that i run into too often is i will go someplace and maybe i didn't do any preparation um a a good realistic example uh my mom lives on a farm in northern california and when the last time we went to visit her um i i didn't really like do any research uh to go on photo trips because It was a visit with my mom, but I also had the opportunity to go do something. Well, then I kind of found myself last minute looking up things and not really finding some good examples. Uh, And, you know, that that frustrates me and, you know, sort of puts me into that mindset of, well, geez, dude, if you had taken a couple of hours two weeks ago, maybe you'd have something have something planned. Whereas with you, it sounds like, oh, I know that the Mormon barns are something that we're going to be near and you, you planned for that, right? Absolutely. And, you know, a, a large component of any family vacation um, in, in my world is expectations management. So, yeah. uh, you know, I built our vacation. Uh, I, 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 I'll be honest and say I built it a little bit around these sunrise locations, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk more about the f- specific <clears throat> photo trip planning. Uh, we'll talk about how we plan around locations. But... Um, I knew we'd be be by some places I had to go photograph. I just think they're so spectacular. You just got to do it. It'd be a crime not to take some time and and make some photos there. Yeah. Um, But I I was up front with my wife and said, hey, I'm going to want to take a couple of mornings uh, on this trip and and go out and take photos. Um, So it wasn't like the night before. I was like, guess what, honey? I'm going to be gone until nine tomorrow. So you're (laughs) And I'm going to get up at four. Yeah, I'm taking the car (laughs) and I'm going to be out. Um, and so 
I, I do think that planning is so important and, and building an expectation with the people that you're traveling with that you are blocking out time for yourself to go out and make some photos. Um, what's great about my situation is my wife and kids understand that that makes me happy. And they're like, great, go have some fun. This is your time to have fun. Later, you're probably going to do some stuff with us that isn't so much fun for you, but fun for us, right? So, um, you know, there's trade-offs It's, it's fun for you, too. It's fun, yeah. Family I, time yeah. is good. But... Family time is great, especially those long hours in the car with the kids. Super, <laughs> super fun. So... Uh, let's just you know set vacations aside, Jeff, and let's talk about photo trips because really what um, I think is important when you're talking about traveling with the intention of making great photographs yes. is you have to be really intentional <laughs> mm-hmm. and thoughtful about where you go, what's realistic in the places that you go. And... Um, and we're going to talk about some of the pitfalls of trip planning. And, and I want people to understand that um, good photographs don't just happen. That there's, you know, it takes a great deal of planning. I myself, I actually find the planning part of a, of a trip, it's not as much fun as the trip itself, but it's a lot of fun. I find it really exciting doing research. I find that you know, it's a great way to spend, especially the winter months. You know, if I'm looking forward to a trip in the summer, say, uh, I may start working on that trip eight, nine months out and start doing research and start thinking about things. Because um, I don't know about you, Jeff, uh, these days it seems like if you want to go somewhere um, and you want to stay in a place that has beds and a roof over your head, <laughs> you got to go months and months and months in advance. Yeah, um, yeah, lately especially. And, and make those plans. Otherwise, your choices get less and less and less. And it's really about those choices. So uh, let's take a stab at, at uh, kind of planning a photo trip um, mm-hmm. with photography in mind, not bringing the kids, not bringing all of the distractions right. of a family vacation, right. but really focused on photography. And, and I've again, only been able to do a couple of these types of trips in my life. So this is pretty fun stuff when it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, um, I think what we're talking about here doesn't necessarily have to be the, the, the week or two weeks that you go to Iceland solo, right? This can also be, hey, I have a Saturday free and all I'm going to do is, is go somewhere and, and shoot photos. Or I'm going to take a weekday where I have a day off and I'm going to, uh, you know, just go, go to a location that I haven't been to. Uh, exactly. So, you know, we can scale this to to either, you know, like a, a couple hours in an afternoon or an even longer trip. Yeah, I think all of the principles apply no matter what. You know, okay. you've got um, you're always going to have a restriction on how much time. You know, if it's a day trip or a week long vacation or a week long photo trip, you're not going to have enough time <laughs> right? <laughs> to make the photos. That's just always, that should always be on your plate. You should always have that in your mind. You're never going to have all the time you want. Um, unless you happen to be uh, independently wealthy and have all the time in the world and no commitments and you can just go National Geographic a place for six months, right? Where you just yeah. camp out and make photos. Let's, let's Most do that. Yeah, most of us don't have that, right? So, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I have to be independently wealthy first. Yeah. I, well, or willing to eat um, really gross things that you find on the side of the road, right? <laughs> um, okay. So that's neither of us. Okay. <laughs> we'll, neither of us. We'll get that out of the way. <laughs> so I think a good general rule when you're planning a day out or a week out or two weeks out that you are going to schedule your your time around the shots that you want. And, um, this involves research and pre-visualization, getting to know the area that you're going to visit. Um, and what's great about today in our internet age is we can go everywhere virtually and look around. We can use uh, Google earth. We can use all these tools. It is, it's mind blowing how we can really walk where we want to walk and look around and see if it's what we want. Yeah. And, um, Whenever I plan a trip, I am going to spend a long time building this list, and then I'm going to winnow it down. So let's say I make a list. I, I'm going to Iceland for a week, and mm-hmm. I make a list of 50 locations in Iceland that I've seen photos of that looked amazing, 
certainly appeal to me as a photographer. And then I'm going to be like, well, I can't hit all 50. <laughs> It's fortunately, um, fortunately in Iceland, they're all grouped in, in, in a very small area, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're all in, within an hour of each other. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, you got to consider all these other <laughs> you know, factors of travel and all that. So you know, start with this list, though, and prioritize mm -hmm. it. And I do want to caution everybody, Jeff. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you have to get the photos that you've seen when you go to a place. And if your goal is just to duplicate what other photographers have done, it may not be a very satisfying experience because you're not going to necessarily get there and see the same thing that they saw. Right. Well, and th th there's kind of a, there's kind of an interesting, um, I don't know, friction here mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I assume you're using, uh, you know, Flickr 500 PX Instagram, glass you're 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 using these as sources of okay i want to i'm going to be in this location what other photos have people shot and but at the same time you don't want to just be like okay well i got that shot i got that shot i got that shot right yeah. um so so you know keeping in mind that 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 all, all all the photos that people have done is fodder for you to start with rather than um, build this list of, okay, these are the shots I want to get. These are the shots that everybody else has. Right. right. It's, it's treated as inspiration, <clears throat> not a checklist. Yeah. You know, I, I'll share a quick story. When I was in Iceland a couple years ago, pre pandemic, right. I went to Iceland, uh, for my 50th birthday. I spent, uh, not nearly enough time on, on Iceland. I, I want to go back. Um, but the time I spent there, I, I spent a long time in each location that I went to. And mm. there was a couple of locations I was at where a photographer would show up and I was working in the middle of the night because it was summertime and that's when the light was the best and there was no one around. Oh, right. And so I'm out in the middle of the night, but it's not dark. Um, and I'm in this beautiful location that has been shot a thousand times, a million times. Mm -hmm. And inevitably a photographer would show up, they would run up the trail, set up their tripod, take a couple shots and run back to their car and leave. <laughs> and this happened several times. And I would, I was sort of like, wow, that's, that, that's sad. You know, that person probably doesn't live in Iceland. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. And they're, they traveled here to experience this spot. Um, at least I did. Yeah. You know, I traveled there to stand there for a while, to soak it up, to kind of, you know, be there, be in right. the moment. And I felt like with those photographers, they were just banging out a list, like, like they were going shopping. You know, mm -hmm. they have to stop at the bread aisle. They have to stop here. And I saw this happen over and over again. And it kind of made me sad because um, travel's expensive. Uh, travel has a climate impact. You know, I feel like mm -hmm. there's a lot of gravity on your time in a place that's not your home. And you do want to come away with some great photographs, but you also want to come away with a really profound experience where you got a sense of the place or you may be connected with some people there or um, had an experience that was unexpected and, and fun. Um, and I think that when I build trips now, when I, when I kind of plan these things, I'm going for that. I'm not going for the shot mm -hmm. that I've seen everybody else take. Um, I'm going for the opportunity to see what I can come up with in that location because it's an inspirational location. Uh, right. and, and so knowing, um, you know, for instance, when's the best time of day to be there, right? So don't just show up when you can get there and hope that it's what you saw on Instagram. You have to plan to be there at the right time of day to get the best conditions. Well, well, that's one thing that, uh, when you mentioned the people who just like show up and take a picture and go, one of the the surprises to me when I started doing landscape photography was that 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 sense of time in a location, because when you show up, it's not automatically going to be the dramatic sky, the most fantastic vista, whatever. And so if you go, you're like, okay, I was here. I took a shot. That's how it was when I got there. So look, it's pretty and then move on. Um, I, I mean, and, and especially, and I've not been to Iceland, so correct me if I'm wrong, but my sense is at pretty much any location, you know, the, 
the, the clouds are going to change, the light's going to change. And all of that, that, that time spent there, even if you're, you know, moving around in your location, you're trying to get different angles and fresh views, you know, all these things that, that we talk about and other people talk about. I don't know if people really consider the time there and realizing, okay, the, the sun is down. Mm -hmm. Well, the sky might get amazing now, or maybe it won't. And you have to kind of like find out. And that all goes into that idea that we, that we're going to hammer on all the time is that, that satisfaction of being there, not just, Hey, look, I was there. See this big waterfall that you've seen on Instagram. Look, that's, that's my arm pointing mm -hmm. at the, at the waterfall, right? <laughs> <laughs> or it's a selfie. Here's my selfie in front of that. You know, yeah, it's... yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah, do that. But I don't know, embrace <clears throat> the moment and the time there and not just see it as a, a, a notch, right? On your list. Exactly. And it's, you know, I, I, what you said made me think about mountain climbers and they have this term called peak bagging where you're just trying to get to the summit and down as fast as you can and check uh. it off your list. Like I've been up to the top of all these mountains. Um, you know, it, you, you're probably not having a, the best time doing mm -hmm. that. And I really, I really think that for me as a person who doesn't need to make my living by making photos at locations, yeah, it is more and more, and we've talked about this so many times, and we're going to talk about it so many times. It's more and more <laughs> about this experience that we're that we that we're seeking. Yeah. And I got to tell you, um, you know, you may not have been to Iceland, but both of us have been to Kauai, and yeah. Kauai is a place where the weather changes uh, quite a bit throughout the day. And you yes. can go to some places in Kauai that are really famous, they're really gorgeous and beautiful, and you can stand there for a half hour and get six or seven dramatically different photos. Right. Um, based on, you know, the clouds moving in and out, whether it's raining or not, you know, that sort of thing. And I, I think that um, what people need to remember is that all the photos that you find inspiring on social media, I doubt very many of those were shot the moment that person arrived. Mm -hmm. You know, that there's time invested, that there's um, research done on locations, or maybe they walked around. The research was done on ground, you know, where you uh, get to a location, you're like, well, this is the spot that this person shot this photo from, but I actually think that spot over there, you know, 100 yards away is more interesting, or two miles up the trail, that's actually better. Um, one of the things I, I have found really exciting about planning for trips when I'm getting, making photos is I try to give myself enough time before I think the light's going to be the best to look around once I get there, because I have a preconceived notion, but I know that that's not everything and yeah. that the light conditions and the weather conditions and the foliage, you know, all of the things that make a great photo are going to be a little bit different than they were in other people's shots. And so I've gotten to photo locations that I sure, was sure that were going to be uh, amazing and there was garbage laying around or there was trees in the way, right? They'd grown up, bushes had grown up in the way. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, this is not what I wanted. And so if you don't build in time to make ad adaptions, to be nimble, mm -hmm. um, you're going you're gonna to be stuck with what you get because you're constrained by your time. Yeah. So one of the things that I always try to do is I identify locations that I really want um, and shots that inspire me from those locations are always the kind of driver. But then I say, when is that location going to be at its best for light and conditions? Um, and can I get there at least 30 minutes before that time is going to be there? So I have time if I get stuck in construction. <laughs> Right. <laughs> or, or if you're going into a national park, did you leave time to get through the entrance gate? You know, there's probably going to be a line of people and you, you're sitting there as the light gets great. And you're like, ah, you know, that's really horrible. Um, so give yourself plenty of time so you can arrive at least 30 minutes prior to when you think the photos are going to happen. And then get out and calm yourself down. Um, get in, you know, start hearing the, the place, start looking around, start sort of settling into this rhythm of making uh, really kind of flow state-ish uh, types of photography happen. Yeah. And what I love about that time is 
everything, you know, we talked about this in episode two with flow state distractions are really powerful and keeping you from, from doing your best. That 30 minutes is where I let those distractions melt away. I'm not thinking about, you know, all the stuff I was thinking about 30 minutes prior. I'm sort of getting, you know, settled and calm and peaceful and I'm, you know, letting my blood pressure go back down. <laughs> and it, it really is incredibly peaceful and nice. And there's all kinds of studies around just being out in nature and what it does to humans, you know, it does to our, um, hormone levels and brainwave functions and all these great things. Um, and I think that giving yourself that time to adjust to a creative mode is important. And if yeah. you don't leave that, if you don't plan for that time, your photos are going to suffer. Um, so you got to calculate realistic travel times. And I have, I love Google. <laughs> I love Google Maps and I love Apple Maps and I love being able to type in an address and it tells me how long it's going to take me to get there. And then I add a bunch of time to that because um, one of the things is, you know, especially if you're traveling to an unfamiliar place, you're not going to know if the directions you were given were really accurate right. and really safe. Um, and so please, please be careful with that. And if, if your location involves a hike and a walk in the dark, perhaps, <laughs> uh, and you're running <laughs> because you're trying to get to that, that viewpoint before the sun comes up, right. um, you're just asking for trouble. If you're in a rush, you've got to be better than that. If you want to make truly great photos, you know, big, big, big thing. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Okay. So. So we've identified some places to go. We've identified some shots that we want. Um, now we have to actually get there. Yeah. And, you know, you've said, yeah, you know, make sure you get there early enough. I, th that's something that, that I, I still occasionally, I, I will look at my, my app on my phone and say, oh, well, I know when sunset is. And then realize that, oh, no, I, it, it's too close to sunset. I'm not set up and I don't know where to shoot and, you know. Frustration, frustration. But uh, there's also that other aspect of, um, okay, I'm going to Iceland or Hawaii or the middle of Montana. Uh, where am I going to stay? Like, mm, yeah. should I, should I, you know, <laughs> should I sleep in my car uh, right before sunrise? I, I've never done that. But, uh, you know, like there are definitely arguments to be made for doing that. Yeah, I and I've done that. It's um, doesn't always lead to the best morning, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you do. You, you have to consider um, that travel time in the mornings. It's, you know, sunrise shoots are, are are my favorite kind of photography for outdoor mm -hmm. photography. I really love sunrises. Uh, sunsets are a little easier because you kind of got all day to get there. But um, if you can stage yourself close to the location you want to photograph um, and get a good night's sleep. So that you're ready to be creative when the when the light gets good, um, that's obviously optimal. So if you have a camper van and you can park right at the spot and just step out in the morning with your cup of coffee and set up your tripod, <laughs> I mean, that's the best case scenario. Yeah. Um, but most of us don't have those options, and so looking for accommodations that are safe and comfortable that's going to be a big uh, mantra for me. You know, yeah. safe and comfortable. Uh, I have slept in my car in places you're not supposed to park and sleep. And I've slept really fitfully because I was worried that, you know, state trooper is going to knock on my window at any moment and tell me to move along. Yeah. Um, or I was worried about somebody, you know, <laughs> harassing me. Uh, sure. Plus sleeping in a car is not, is not great. Um, so those might not be your best options. You may be better off just getting a good uh, several hours of sleep and then getting up really super early and driving to that location. So, mm -hmm. but don't make that decision the day before. If you're doing a photo trip, you really have to pre-think this stuff and you have to pre-arrange. And, and I'm not saying you have to necessarily make hotel reservations months in advance, but you do need to think about what you're going to do. You can't just boondock your, your trip and just be like, well, I'll just figure it out when I get there. Yeah. Because it's probably not going to work out, especially these days. Everywhere is just so crowded. It's just mm -hmm. you, you might not be able to park where you want to park. You might not be able to camp where you want to camp. Uh, and you might have to find a hotel room in that town or that state even <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. 
So you got to plan ahead and be really thoughtful about leaving yourself plenty of time to get to your location. Um, but I also want to talk about some of the other human needs, right? We have to take care of, you know, food and, you know, staying hydrated, <laughs> places to go to the bathroom. You know, I have actually, uh, embarrassed to say this, but I've actually been on photo locations where I didn't make good photos because I had to pee so bad, right? Uh, and it's yeah. like, man, the light's getting really good, but I actually literally can't focus on it right now because I am hopping around, <laughs> you know? And <laughs> yep, so you've, yep. got to, you've got to take care of yourself. Um, we mention this quite a bit, and we will have episodes about clothing and outfitting yourself with the right gear. Um, but... You know, if that's not part of your trip planning process, knowing what the climate's going to be like, how cold is it going to be when you get up for that sunrise shoot? Um, mm -hmm. Jeff, you know, I was in Wyoming in the Tetons, and it's high altitude. You know, you're up there a bit. Uh, it, it was June, which is summertime, but in the mountains in the pre-dawn, it's like 42 degrees. <laughs> right. And I went out to photograph the sunrise at the Mormon Barns, which is a famous location, Beautiful barns, Tetons in the background. You know, you've seen these photos. Um, yeah. I showed up there 30 minutes before the light was going to be good. I went and walked around and found the compositions that I liked in the dark and slowly let the, the light come on. Um, about what time was that? It was about 4.30 in the morning, 5 okay, o'clock yeah. in the so, morning. Yeah, yeah so that's so, that's seriously early. Okay. Seriously early, yeah. And so my, I think I <clears> left uh, Jackson at like 4, 3.45, <clears> something like that. But I got there, and as the sun started coming up, other photographers were arriving, and there was a gentleman that came and stood next to me who was wearing shorts and a T-shirt, and it was 42 degrees. Wow. And I, I was cold in the gear that I brought, and I was wearing jacket, and I had a hat on and gloves and everything, and I was cold. I was stomping around trying to stay warm, and he seemed really uncomfortable, and I'm sure he wasn't creative and focused on making yeah, yeah. photos because he showed up unprepared. So, you know, he didn't have, maybe he didn't have time to grab that stuff. Maybe he didn't have that stuff. I don't know, but I certainly felt bad for him. Um, and you don't get, you don't get points, Jeff. <laughs> you don't get points for suffering <laughs> for your art. Um, I know that that's a misconception that people think you got to have some suffering involved. Um, it's really a distraction. It's really a distraction to have to yeah. pee or have, be hungry or be cold. Right. Yeah, but dude, like I, I just can't wear pants in the summer, man. Like it doesn't matter if I've got icicles on my calves. I, I just can't wear pants, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, it's almost performance art. You know, you see people like that, and you're like, are you just trying to look cool? Um, because you don't want to wear a big, you know, puffy coat. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's talk about. Um, you know, we've talked about thinking about where you're going to sleep, get some rest. Um, right. But one of the things that's common in photo trips is, and for me anyway, is I think about when the light's going to be best, and then I block out times when it's not the best. And those are my times to travel or rest or mm. eat or process photos or be a tourist, you know, go shopping or something. Yeah. Um, but you have to, uh, you know, you have to block out, all of these times. So I, I treat the photos that I'm looking for as the framework. And I look for these gaps and the gaps between those photos are the times that I have to, to move, sleep, eat, and all of those other things I need to do to stay happy. Um, one of the things that I think happens a lot of times when people are on photo trips is they don't leave enough gap Mm -hmm. And they're rushing around or they end up at a location at a time where the light's not best. And then they get really frustrated that their photograph of those mountains in the middle of the, or waterfalls are a perfect example of this, right? Oh, you yeah. go to a waterfall in the middle of a sunny day, it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> right. It's just not going to be a good photo. I don't care who you are. It's just not. And, um, <laughs> You know, I see, but I see this, I'll be on a hike with my family and we'll be at a waterfall and some photographer will come tromping up and they're shooting this waterfall in the blazing sunlight. And they're, I look at them and I'm like, I hope you didn't travel a long way for this because it's going to be disappointing. Uh, it really is, uh, up to you as a person who's traveling, looking to make great photos to think about the optimal time for these photographs. And so let's just do some general rules of thumb, right? 
Okay. Sunrises and sunsets, right? Great. The best light, right? <laughs> yeah. What are some other great times to, to photograph, Jeff? What do you think? Oh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, now, now I'm in Put class. Put on the spot. <laughs> well, um, it all depends on what you're shooting, right? Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, night, night photography, um, you know, that, that involves a lot more planning and a lot more, uh, visualization of where you're going to be. But if you, you know, know where the stars are going to be and you know where your, your foreground is going to look like and all of that, it can be really rewarding. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, like what I've generally followed is, you know, the, the, the middle of the day is, is not the time for shooting outdoors, mostly because you just have, you know, sharp, uh, straight up and down sunlight and there's, there's not very much character. And of course we can break all those rules, go shoot in the shade, go shoot inside, like all of that. But if you're looking at a trip, a location, as we're talking about, you really kind of want to hit those, those edges. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, and those are the times that a lot of folks uh, who aren't photographers are not going to those spots. Yeah. So, you know, my trip to Iceland is a great example of this. You know, I went in July, which is the busiest time of year to go to Iceland. Yeah. The place is overrun <laughs> with tourists from all over the world. It's, it's a very popular um, place to visit. I found that by 9 a.m., most locations were impossible to photograph mm -hmm. uh, because the crowds, because of people. Even if the light was good, you were just just too packed in with everybody else to get good good compositions. Yeah. The other thing I found was um, those folks all disappeared about nine o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and so those twelve hours, I just planned on not taking my camera out. <laughs> you know, um, but what I found was really interesting was uh, the time right after the sun goes down is a really curious time. There's some psychology here. Um, and I've led a lot of workshops where we've done sunset shoots. And, you know, the second that sun drops below the horizon, you can hear the tripods just click, 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 click. You know, people yeah. are just <laughs> done. They're like, oh, I got it. <laughs> and I'm always like, stop. This is, this is now when it starts. This is when the magic mm -hmm. starts is that sun is now out of the way. We're not trying to deal with this big ball of light. We've got right. all of the residual color and all of the cool um, rays and shadows and stuff of that sun without that overexposing orb, right? In the middle of our right. shot. And, you know, I was out on a beach this weekend on the Oregon coast and it was a gorgeous sunset. Uh, and there was tons of people out taking photos of it, and as was I. And as soon as that sun went down, I saw people heading for their cars. But the color of the sky just transformed. And this it's, it's called the blue hour, right? And so mm -hmm. you've got this um, gradation from warm tones to cool tones, and it evolves and becomes something very, very spectacular. Uh, and I find that if people's expectations are that they're going to shoot the sunset, the, as a photographer, you need to expand those expectations and say, if I'm going to shoot the sunrise, I'm going to shoot the hour before the sunrise. If I'm going mm -hmm. to shoot the sunset. I want to shoot the hour after the sunset um, and schedule that. It's, those are the magical times. And that's when yeah. a lot of really creative shots happen. You mentioned nighttime photography. Astrophotography is worth it in itself just going out and shooting the milky way or you know uh, a landscape under moonlight is magical is really mm -hmm. incredible uh, and requires a whole different set of skills and techniques that kind of push your boundaries as a photographer right and you're also not usually competing with other people for that space which is super <laughs> that's nice. true yeah super nice. so so i want to bring up something that that you've touched on uh, just to make this more specific, because, you know, we're, we're focusing a lot on sunrise and sunset and, and, and those great, great times. And then you have all that middle stuff. Yeah. Um, and the middle stuff, I think one distinction I want to make about this discussion is, uh, especially in the context of having a photo trip, right, is that it's not like you are 
uh, you're you're on in the morning and you shoot, 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 and then you're off and then you turn back on for the sunset, right? right. Um, but, but like like that, that was my experience uh, early on when I was shooting. But especially in this sort of photo trip context, you have to think that, you know, like you're really kind of on the whole time because you're dealing with things like, um, you know, maybe reviewing your photos, uh, uh, eating, taking a nap. Like it's – this sounds a little harsh, but like your job goes from sun up to sun down and you can have some breaks and build in some breaks, but even building in some breaks is, is part of the process too. So I just want to make sure that people aren't thinking like, okay, well, all right, I've, I've done my photography time and now I'm not going to do anything else. And not to, to make it sound as if you have to be so focused on photography every minute of the day, but you also don't want that to be wasted time because, you know, Again, you probably spent good money to get there. You took time off from work. You bought equipment and you can use all that extra time to do things that are that are helping inform the actual times when you're shooting. Yeah, it's all about setting yourself up for success when the light is best. And when, when you know, so you're going to be in the place that you need to be when the light is at its best and yeah. you're going to be at your best. Yeah. Um, it's very unrealistic unless you're 22 years old and incredibly fit. <laughs> it's That's very me. unrealistic. Exactly. <laughs> unless you're deaf, it's yeah. unrealistic to think that you're going to get up at three 30 in the morning and be at your very best until midnight. <laughs> yeah. You know, most of us can't do that. And if we do that, we can do it for maybe a day and then the next day we're shot. Right. So one of the things I do when I'm building a workshop is I build in recovery times. So if I have a late night planned, we're going to do astrophotography over a certain scene and then it involves a drive afterwards, getting back to the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't plan a sunrise shoot the next morning. It's just not just not nice. <laughs> it's just not OK <laughs> because people are going to be ready to take good photos in the morning. Yeah. And, um, they may be shot for the next day and then they may get sick. They may get just exhausted. And right. so, um, it really is difficult to plan a trip and have that list of all those places you want to go and then say, you know what, you're going to take that middle of that day and you're going to sleep. And like, but I could get another spot. I could mm -hmm. get one more location in that gap. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that you're going to pay for that somewhere. You've got to bank that time to sleep, process photos, get yourself centered, get your laundry done, mm -hmm. um, you know, that sort of thing. I, me, when I travel, I require a certain amount of time by myself to sort of uh, decompress, um, you know, let my mind kind of wind down. And if I'm out mm -hmm. shooting a sunset and I stay up late, um, I'm not going to get back to a hotel and just fall right into bed and go to sleep. I need to have some time to kind of come yeah. down from that. So I have to plan for that. I have to, to build that time in. And maybe it means a big sleep disruption. You change your sleep pattern. And one of the things I've learned um, is, especially as I get older, uh, I don't need as much sleep as I used to, but I do need regular sleep. And if I'm going to change my sleep pattern... Um, I have to be conscious of what that's going to do to me and make adjustments. So as an example, I'm, you're in, I, I'm in Iceland. Uh, I knew that I was going to be working nights when I was in Iceland. Right. So the time difference between Portland and Iceland is you know, considerable. And so what I did was for a few days before I went to Iceland, I altered my sleep pattern at home to make it easier for me to make that transition to nights in Iceland. Um, and the human body can, our circadian rhythms, right? Can we can adjust them an hour each day? That's a realistic adjustment. And so, um, part of your trip planning is, you know, if you're going to be shifting your sleep from, uh, usually I sleep at night to I'm going to sleep during the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you can make that adjustment ahead of time, you're not going to be, uh, weirded out and your brain's not going to be doing freaky things to you. 
uh, when you're out trying to make photos <laughs> in the middle right. of the night on your trip. So plan for that. So again, uh, you get a, you can change your sleep patterns by an hour per day. Um, you, you can change your circadian rhythms. Now it's going to take that much to get them back at the end of the trip. So leave, leave that thought sure. for that too. But, um, so what I did for Iceland was I set myself up so that I was ready to work at night and it paid off. I enjoyed locations all to myself at the best time of night for light. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in campgrounds, there was no line for the showers. <laughs> you know, there's, it was really, really peaceful. And I could tell that there was tons of people around, but I didn't see them that much. I was yeah. really, I felt like I had the place to myself um, because I was sleeping in the middle of the day and working at night. And it, it was great. Um, granted, that's a northern latitude shooting situation in the middle of the summer where it, the yeah. light is good at night. Um, but I know people who do astrophotography and they, they do that. They go to nights when they go out on their trips to do photos. Um, yeah. Build in time for yourself. Know what your sleep needs are and bank for it. You know? Well, and, and also another thing that I found when I'm doing photography, uh, it, it is much more mentally taxing than I ever expect. Because even though you're, you're, you're just standing there waiting for the light, your brain, if you're doing it right, and, and well, quite honestly, even if you're not doing it right, you're, you're thinking about compositions, you're looking at the light, you're evaluating the scene around you, you're trying to figure out, should I be in this location? Maybe this location over here is better. And at least for me, like my mind is always going. And so I, I need some balance on the other side where I can not think about anything. And maybe that's, I'm taking a nap. Maybe I am just doing you know, like routine things, like making sure my, uh, you know, my, my photos have been imported from my camera card. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, making sure that, that the photos are backed up, but you know, all that kind of stuff that, that doesn't require me to be actively thinking so that my brain can can just take a break and not be exhausted because it's it's a cumulative thing. You could hit day three, and if you've just been burning, 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 you're going to get to an amazing location, and you're going to be a vegetable and think like like my brain my brain can't handle this. Mm-hmm. And th- th- there've been a few times um, when not, not necessarily not necessarily photographically, but I remember going to the the Chicago uh, Museum of Art. I think that's what it's officially called. Um, fantastic museum masterworks literally around every corner and after we'd been there for a couple of hours my brain was full I I could not I literally could not process any more fine art and I remember walking I was like oh there's a Cezanne and uh, there's a Picasso like an original whatever and like I couldn't appreciate it because my brain was full and it was exhausted. And I get that feeling too sometimes if I'm out shooting for three hours trying to to, to nail a, a sunrise. And afterwards, uh, I'm exhausted. I'm hungry. I'm in desperate need of coffee yeah. and probably <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> right? For sure. Yeah, you got to get those things in. <clears throat> it's um, knowing how to take care of yourself is peak adulting, right? I mean, as, as a yeah. dad of two kids, I feel like oh, my whole time on earth is spent explaining to them that if you don't eat breakfast, you're not going to have a good day. Right. And, <laughs> and then I sit and then I skip breakfast <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you know, <laughs> pay attention to what you're saying. Um, yeah. When you're traveling, it's so easy to be like, instead of eating a good meal, I'm going to hit that gas station and get a, a Slurpee and a, and a box of Jojo's. <laughs> and, and a hot I'm dog that's ex- been rolling for three hours. <laughs> yeah. And I've been on the road and I'm a little road weary and buzzy. Um, and so, it, it, and I hit that sunset location. I expect myself to be productive and functional. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm human. Yeah. So uh, nutrition's important. Um you know, go out and have a great meal, but don't go out and have a monster feast right before you want to go photograph, uh, the sunset. Uh, Don't, um, 
don't rely too much on coffee to keep you going because even those of us who really love and adore coffee know that there's a point where it's got no returns for you. Um, okay. Okay, man. This podcast is over. Is it, is, was that too <laughs> you, hard? You, that was you, heresy? You, you violated the prime. <laughs> no, no, no. Sadly, sadly, uh, there is a limit. Um, yeah. and, and you will pay for it. Just make sure you're having good coffee on a regular, yeah. regular you basis. You got to have good coffee. Yeah. You yeah, got to yeah. pay for it. Yeah. So one thing I want to, um, hit on too, I don't want to forget this, Jeff, you mentioned this a couple of times and it, it keeps, it keeps popping up my head. One of the things that I do on a trip that's sort of meditative for me, and it's a good recovery activity is backing up my photos. Oh yes. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel like if things go bad, it won't be all lost. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I think a good strategy for trip planning is taking some time for digital asset management and having a, some sort of backup strategy that, um, that works. And you're, you're an expert on this. You're much better than me. Um, I have my strategies and most of the time they work, but do you find it meditative to sort of sit and just move data from cards to discs? <laughs> um, <clears throat> a little bit. What I find more rewarding is just that, that sense of, um, that sense of safety, that sense of, uh, just, just knowing that, all right, like anything could happen. My, my camera could fall out the window, um, you know, or a memory card could get corrupted. Hard drive can die, like all these things. And just knowing that I have a backup of my images on a little SSD or something uh, just, just gives that, that peace of mind. That's also a, a huge part of this because <laughs> when you said digital asset management, I, I could just imagine people thinking like, oh, God, I hate digital asset management. Like like the term itself just sounds so <laughs> unphotographic, uncreative, you know, like, like, ooh, can I get to a flow state doing my digital asset What's management? It? And but but the thing is, asset management is is you get rewarded on the other side. Because it, what it means is after you've spent all this money and all this time and all this planning and carried all this gear and underwent all this weather, you don't get home and realize, oh, my card is full or my card got corrupted and all of my photos are gone. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you know, I love that you have this as sort of a a, a calming Zen <laughs> This is my 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 productive downtime. Like that, that that's a great way to approach it. It's because I, I also it really needs to get done. Yeah, I really recognize it's also part of my OCD tendencies, right? So you've stayed in hotel oh, rooms yeah, with yeah. me. You know, I like like I get into a room and I want to set things up just right. It, it's it's probably not healthy, but what it does for me is it you know it creates a sense of control. Um, and when I'm yeah. traveling, I don't have control over a lot of things. Uh, yeah. I don't want control over everything. I want to remain open to, you know, changing conditions and new opportunities. And mm -hmm. part of that feeling of freedom comes from knowing that things are taken care of on the backside. And so yes. for me, every day when I'm out making photos, I like to back up my photos onto a, just a little portable hard drive. So I have a rule that uh, two is one, one is none. So yeah. if I have two copies of every photo I've taken, that counts as one. Um, if I have one, I don't feel safe. I don't feel, I mean, it's not like I'm not going to sleep or anything like that. Right. But it, I do feel anxious that I need to get that backed up. Yeah. And it's, if you plan, make a plan for that, that you're going to have a way to back up your photos to something that's secure and, you know, you keep it with you in your camera bag, maybe, or mm -hmm. something like that, that it, it really does help you stay more peaceful. And we were talking about creating situations where you can be centered and focused. Everything you can do in that regard um, helps you when you, when it comes time to be creative, not be distracted and not be stressed out or worn yeah. out from being stressed out. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up real quick. Well, yeah, no, that, that's great. And, and also uh, what's nice about, about doing backups um, is like, it, it doesn't actually take a whole lot. It's, it's something that if you just went and you filled a, a, you know, 16 gig card full of images, uh, 
as long as you have a laptop or a tablet or some way to move those images from a card to a backup device, like you just get it started and then you go get some coffee or you go get lunch or whatever. It's not like you have to babysit it. And so it's it's minimally demanding and yet has such such a reward. Now, before we wrap up, I want to touch on something that, that sort of came up earlier and, and, and you just you, you just touched on it yourself. So we have trip planning. We have uh, we've we, we visualize the spots that we want to, to shoot. We figured out where we need to go, how long it's going to get there, where we're going to stay, what clothing we should bring, what camera gear we should bring. And what I fear is that some people and and this is like my my sort of gut reaction is oh i don't want to do all that 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 regimented uh having every minute planned out that way because how am i going to be spontaneous how am i going to you know be creative if i'm having to do all this stuff right like, don't put me in a box, man. I'm a photographer. I'm an artist. And I need to be spontaneous and just just see what happens when I get there. Where's that balance? How does that? Well, I think I know what the answer is. And I want you to say it. And if you don't say it, I'm going to say it. But go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I have a term for this uh, approach, which is, you know, I'm just going to see what happens. I call it Forrest Gumping. You remember Forrest Gump. You know, he sort of <laughs> just stumbles through his life and good things happen for him, you know? Right, right. Um I think of trip planning and all the stuff I like to obsess about. I like doing it all on the front end at home. Yep. A lot of times it's because I have time to do it slowly and carefully and all of that. I think of that as prepping my canvas. You know, painters usually don't just take a blank canvas and start painting. They do, they do a wash on it. They do all kinds of prepping on it. I think of that as prepping the canvas. And when I get to a location... If it isn't working the way I planned it to work, I'm never surprised. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I expect that. And I have, I have the freedom because I've taken care of all of these things and I understand what my options are. It's about choices, right? It's about having a lots and lots of choices. So an example real quick, when I was in Iceland, um, I had planned out this route and I knew all of, I had made this list of things I wanted to see in Iceland. And I was down in the south uh, eastern corner of Iceland, and it, the weather came in, and it was horrible. And it was like horrible to the point where no good photos were being made. It was sideways yeah. rain. The clouds were real low to the ground. It was you know I wasn't seeing anything. Um, and I woke up uh, you know eleven o'clock at night. It was time to go to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I looked outside. I looked at the weather report, and I'm like, this is it's just not going to work. And I looked up in the northwest corner of Iceland was great. The conditions were good. I'm like, ah. time to ch time to move. And I drove for seven hours that day. I drove for seven hours across the country and up to that corner and things were marvelous up there. I made some wonderful photos, but they weren't on my itinerary, yeah. but I knew about them. So when I make my photo plans, you make that list, you research more than you need and you understand what your options are. So you have contingencies when things go bad because they'll go bad. You'll, you'll get yeah. to a park and it'll be closed or you'll get to a, a location and the weather will shut you down. Um, be ready to bounce. Be ready to cut and run. Don't let your plans be your, a prison that keeps you there. Like, well, I, I said I would do this. So I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Um, if it's not working, it's supposed to be fun, right? And if it's not working, get out and, and make it fun somewhere else. Uh, and I'm really glad you brought that up, Jeff, because some of my best photographs that I've made on trips are photographs I've made in places I never planned to go. I mean, I was aware of them. I had sort of said, well, maybe if I get the chance, I would go there. Um, and knowing what my options are allowed me to have that freedom. And I didn't just, it didn't shut down the trip. So, yeah. so keep that, keep that in your pocket. Right. Well, what, what seems to be key there is having some, some options because you know, spontaneity is great. And it can be great to be like, I'm just going to go to a location and see what moves me like, like that, that's fine. But if you then get shut down for some reason, or 
you know, you, you get some great shots and there's still some time left and you you don't know what else you want to do. Having options is always going to be better than just floundering. And, yeah. you know, that's that's I think where you run into trouble. You're like, yeah, man, I'm totally spontaneous. Oh, OK, well, this didn't work out. Now, what are you going to do? Uh, I don't know, because this was the only thing I had in mind. And so even though like my my inner nature is not necessarily to do a whole lot of planning, um, but I've learned from experience, this gets me like if you have a lot of things planned, you can also get rid of those things. And if you come with the expectation that I'm not going to hit everything and I'm going to have a good experience and that's going to inform good photos. And if this one doesn't work out. That's OK, because there's going to be something else or. Yeah, it's just. Having a big plan doesn't necessarily mean you are locked into doing all that. It just means you have more options. Yeah, you're more aware of of what you can do in the in yeah. that place and at those times. Yeah. Um, I really hope people feel like um, when they set up for a photo travel experience that it's, you know, again, back to what we said at the beginning, it's not a checklist. It, it, when you start mm -hmm. establishing your expectations for that trip, you really want to make sure that your expectations are realistic. You know, if you look at a photo in uh, Instagram and it's stunning <laughs> and it's absolutely spectacular and you show up and that scene isn't happening for you. Um, if that ruins your trip, you know, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so one of the things that, that I've done in, in the West here, one of the things we've had to deal with and we're dealing with right now is a lot of wildfire smoke. Mm, yeah. And I've uh, done workshops and done trips where we've shown up at a location and it's uh, got smoked in. It's, it's nasty. Mm -hmm. um, you can either bail and go back to the hotel and watch a movie or you can try to make photos that are just different. Um, and I think that if your expectations are so strong, that you're going to get a certain type of photo and anything but that photo is going to be a disappointment to you. You've set yourself up for, for a rough time. Yeah. And so please be ready to be nimble, uh, be ready to be open to new opportunities. Um, I've had people in workshops that just got completely shut down creatively because they weren't getting what they thought they were going to be getting. And I'm like, but you have all these other things that you could, you know, you showed up at the restaurant and they were out of, uh, you know, <laughs> crab cakes and you were so desperately wanted crab cakes, but you realize, you know, the Chipino is actually spectacular. You should just try it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I came to this location and I saw it on Instagram. I saw 50 people with this shot on Instagram. And this is the shot that I want. Well, you have it on Instagram. You just you know, go look at theirs. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it's 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 our job as photographers is to find the photo that speaks to us, that does the, the satisfies us, uh, yeah. meets our creative needs. And oftentimes that is not the photo you're expecting to get. Just be yeah. ready to open and, and be open to those experiences and, and honestly, success. Honestly, that is some of the best experiences that I've had when you're like, oh, this, everything sucks. I can't make photos. What am I even doing out here? And then you see something and your brain lights up and you're like, oh, well, how about this composition? Oh, maybe, maybe I need to switch to a macro lens. Oh, now this changes everything. And your brain sparks and and you end up having a great time and you make some great photos. It's just not that specific one that you started with yeah. because you planned it because you're flexible. And so these are all things that we're going to cover in more detail in future oh, episodes, yeah. obviously, because there's, there, there's so much to be said about it, but we wanted to, to, you know, give that, that, that high level look of, of trip planning, because like I said at the beginning, it's so easy to get so overwhelmed by all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to be somewhere. How long am I going to be there? How do I even find some of these these nearby locations? And we'll we'll get into those in more detail. But we wanted to just uh, put everything on the table 
and uh, you know because it is uh, what's the word? Uh, it needed to be photocombobulated. Yeah, it's very <laughs> discombobulated. It's time to photocombobulate that. Yeah. So again, we're not answering all the questions. I think we photocombobulated this a little bit, but there's yeah, still quite a, a bit. bit of combobulation left or discombobulation left, I should say. So Jeff, as we're wrapping up here today, um, I do want to mention that you and I are in the midst of planning a trip and we're pretty excited about uh, this adventure. There's a lot of uncertainties and we're going to figure it out as we go. But uh, in future episodes, we're going to be talking about this trip uh, what we do right and what we do wrong. And there'll be more opportunities for us to sort of discuss a lot of these things that we've discussed today. Yeah. I would love to know what our listeners uh, have experienced in trip planning and their photo trips that they've taken. Uh, the best place to reach out to us is our photocombobulate.com website. And uh, you can go there and find the show notes for this episode. And at the bottom of that page, you'll find a comment uh, field where you can, you can give us your thoughts. We'd appreciate that. And also, if there's something that we did not mention, uh, something that we completely glossed over, uh, let us know because that helps us figure out what we should focus on in future episodes. Uh, and, and lastly, we want to ask that you you share and subscribe to the podcast. Um, please consider writing a review and giving it a rating at uh, Apple Podcasts and all of the other outlets uh, because it, it really does help people find the podcast and uh, give it some more visibility because uh, we've just begun and we love doing this. Yeah. If you'd like to see what we look like while we're talking, we also have a YouTube channel <laughs> where we have a lightly edited version of this episode. Um, we'll leave in some of the ums and, and uh, stammering that we do just so you know that we're not robots. Uh, <laughs> so you can find us on YouTube if you search for Photo Combobulate. You can also find us on all the social media channels. We've tried to uh, populate all of those with our presence. So Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, you can find us by searching for Photo Combobulate. Again, all the links for that too are also on photocombobulate.com. Yeah. All right. I, th I think we have partially or at least some level photocombobulated this topic with all more right. to come. What do you say we dive back into our COVID caves and uh, <laughs> plans and trips? <laughs>